Hello everyone and welcome back to Psyched. Today we're going to talk about transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. Somebody else controlling your brain. That only exists in science fiction, right? Well, no. It's actually science fact. Neuroscience fact to be precise. Transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS in short is a non-invasive brain stimulation technique. Non-invasive means that it does not cause damage to the body. Brain stimulation means, well, that it stimulates your brain. So how does TMS work? A TMS machine sends a strong electric current to a coil. Within these coils there are wires in the shape of a circle or a double circle, a so-called figure of eight. Maybe you remember from physics class that transmission of an electric current gives rise to a fluctuating magnetic field in the perpendicular direction. This is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So that means you place the coil on top of the head and you run an electric current through that coil, then a magnetic pulse will be induced that goes through the skull into the brain. Faraday's law also works the other way around. If there is a changing magnetic field, this will induce an electric current in some wires that can transmit an electric current. The cool thing is, the axons in the brain, which form the connection between the brain cells, basically are electric cables. In a normal situation, brain cells communicate by sending small electric signals to one another. So that means, if you create a changing magnetic field in the head, this could artificially induce an electric signal in our axons. And this is exactly what TMS does. It creates a signal between the brain cells. And since the region that TMS hits is about one cubic centimeter, it actually targets quite a lot of neurons. It stimulates a brain region. So why would that be useful? Well, by sending a TMS pulse to a certain brain area, you can see how easily it gets activated. This is what we call cortical excitability. And this can give us information whether a region of the brain becomes more or less active in a particular situation. You could for example look if the brain becomes more active after taking medication, drinking coffee or after sleeping and so on. Another way to use TMS is to interfere with ongoing activity. If you are doing a task, for example you have to calculate 54 times 23, brain regions that are important for arithmetic ability would be quite active. Sending a TMS pulse to a brain region would interfere with the activity of that area. If with your TMS you target a brain area that is indeed important for arithmetic ability, the calculation time may be longer or you will make more mistakes. However, if the area you targeted is not important for arithmetic ability, then the calculation time stays the same. In this way, we can figure out if a region is or is not involved in a specific action. Now, the effect of a single or just a few TMS pulses is very short. Basically, the effect just happens in the moment. There are no after effects. However, when applying TMS repeatedly, for a longer time, you can make a brain region more or less active. Depending on the parameters, the effects can last for half an hour or even up to multiple days. This is what we call repetitive TMS or RTMS, but we will look at this in more detail in a future video. So I hope you enjoyed the explanation about TMS and I hope to see you the next time. Bye bye.